Good morning. Today is Friday, June 3rd. We are getting in the labor report for the month of May. Again, this takes place the second week of May, so we may not have seen some of these recent announcements that we've had on hiring freezes. And today we'll talk a little bit about the Tesla announcement that Elon Musk had. Uh, he sent out an email overnight warning of job losses. But uh, unemployment rate did tick up one tenth to three point six percent from a consensus of three and a half percent, and you did have uh, the payrolls number, however, came in better than expected at three hundred ninety thousand versus consensus of three hundred twenty eight thousand. So overall, uh, a pretty good report. Encouragingly, also the average hourly earnings actually came in lower than expected. So generally, people want to see higher average hourly earnings, but when it's lower. And we have a lot of inflation. This gives the Fed a little bit more confidence that we're not going to have a wage price spiral. And I think that that might be good news. This may be a um, perfect scenario, actually, for the markets, because it, it might take the Fed's pressure on the market off just a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, you have uh, a report, at least, that's showing fairly strong job growth if I think that this may be um, probably the best report that we see in a while. Tom, thoughts? Yeah, this is definitely above expectations, particularly after we got the ADP number. Uh, the revision numbers just came in as well, and they revised up last month from 428,000 new jobs to 436,000 new jobs. So, you know, on a two-month roll here, we're you know out outperforming by about 80,000 jobs, uh, which is really strong. But yeah, again, to your point, the month-over-month -month, uh, average hourly earnings coming in short. Uh, I think is a slightly positive sign indicating that wage inflation perhaps is slowing or at least not hitting expectations, which again is a, is a very positive thing. Though, if you look at the bond market, treasuries are selling off uh, pretty strongly this morning. We're up to about 295 on the 10 year, uh, you know, but we are seeing steepening, which is net positive as well. Yeah, so an, a, very, a very interesting report uh, this morning, uh, certainly not nearly as bad as the ADP private payrolls report that we got uh, last uh, yesterday morning. Uh, so we are seeing a little bit better, um, better numbers from this and the market's actually responding. It was down about 80 basis points before the market opened. Now we're down about 46. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out later today. Um, we're certainly beginning to trend in the right direction on some of these numbers. Uh, the problem is where does payrolls ultimately land? And uh, if we're following the ADP report, it's not so good. If we're following the national uh, numbers, that's actually holding in fairly strongly. So we'll continue to watch that. But this month's report, fairly good. We haven't seen a big uptick in initial jobless claims, which might give me confidence that uh, we can hang in there for a little bit longer. But it does seem like the dam is beginning to break on the jobs front, as we will get to later in the call. Uh, Coles. Tom, this is a stock that you followed a long time. They were in the midst of a bunch of drama last night, really for the not last few months. They said that they were going to put themselves up for sale, look at strategic options. They said they had 20 or 30 companies that were going to submit bids, and it looks like there are two, and neither of them are especially strategic or given very good offers. People were looking, for, hoping that they would get a $70 bid. Now it looks like maybe in the 50s, maybe 60 uh, the stock was trading around $41 yesterday. It's up to $44 today. Uh, at one point yesterday, they said that uh, New York Post reported that Kohl's had delayed bids indefinitely because they basically weren't getting the bids they thought they were going to get. Um, but in the evening, Wall Street Journal came out saying actually Sycamore Partners, which is a private equity group, uh, they bought Ann Taylor, Loft, uh, Lane Bryant, all out of bankruptcy. You know, when all those retailers went bankrupt in 2020, this private equity company came in and bought them all. Uh, they also own Staples Express, the limited. They bid in the mid $50 a share range, which would value the company about seven or $8 billion. Um, and they also received, Kohl's also received a better bid from the franchise group. The franchise group is only worth one and a half billion dollars. So they bid $60, but I don't know how they're going to get the capital for that. Uh, so they'll have to go out and raise more equity. They may structure the deal in a, in a different way. They'll probably have to put a consortium together. Um, so although it's a better bid, I don't know if they'll be able to line up the financing to purchase Kohl's. Tom, what are your thoughts on this? It looks like the board will review the bids in the quote coming days. Uh, do you think that Kohl's will ultimately sell to one of these? Um, because it's not, they're not great offers. I think they should. I mean, Kohl's is a tough one. It's one that I've 
owned back in 2013 to 2016 range. Uh, at that point in time, they had partnered up with Amazon. They had dedicated, you know, I think it's like 1500 square feet of all store space to Amazon Alexa products. They were doing returns at Kohl's. Uh, and the expectation at that time was that Kohl's would be the next Whole Foods, you know, getting taken under completely by Amazon and becoming an Amazon, uh, you know, basically brick and mortar situation. Uh, that never came to fruition. The stock ran all the way up to like 90 bucks a share. And since then, they have not been excellent operators. Uh, they've just continuously uh, gotten sloppier and sloppier in stores. The stock price has come down. Uh, they've always had relatively clean balance sheets. I've owned the bonds over and over again in my career. They're not particularly cheap, you know, over the last couple of years, but, uh, you know, four or five years ago, these were unbelievable, uh, really clean, short-term corporates to own. You know, I think this is a bailout for the management team. I just don't think they're very strong. I think this is an opportunity for them to cash out and move on. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity for holders of coals that have been, uh, I mean, they've had a tough go of it. I mean, the stock was double what it is today, you know, three, four years ago, you know, to kind of get half that back on a, on a bid would be, would be nice and just kind of move on. I just think that, you know, it's sort of a, I think it's sort of a defeat though, to be lumped in with, you know, Ann Taylor and Staples and Express and all these, you know, antiquated 1990s mall type properties uh, is a, is a little bit of a defeat for them. But, you know, at the end of the day, taking $20 per share and walking, I think is a really good move. And I think they need to consider these uh, pretty strongly. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they, these guys are going to be able to line up the financing. Uh, that that's the biggest question. And I think Coles is kind of, they've bet everything on selling the company and these bids are not, they're not real strong. They're, they're not strong bids. And that's the thing they're, too. They're not like, strategic. They're private equity. These guys aren't going to move on price. This isn't a, yeah, this isn't a great move for, I mean, it's great if you're a shareholder, it gives you an opportunity to get out, take some upside, but I would not be buying Coles here, the stock, or if I was in private equity trying to take that as a turnaround story. I just don't think it's a strong property. I think the market's telling you that today. I mean, the bids are apparently the low bids 55 and the stock's only up at 44. Yeah. So the market basically calling BS on some of this stuff. Yep. Um, Microsoft yesterday, the big news was they issued a profit warning. They were down about three, 4% at one point, actually closed up on the day. And we'll get to potential reasons why for that. Um, but they cut revenue and profit guidance for the second quarter. They said it's entirely due to currency. Uh, and so the thinking here is that if it's entirely due to currency movements and fluctuations, the underlying business is actually in line with what they thought in April, that's, that's good news. And, and I think there's something to be said for that. Um, the problem is two reasons. First reason is Microsoft has historically been able to offset currency, negative currency movements um, through just good operational results and, and better than expected underlying numbers. Um, in addition, the currency moves largely happened before the company just provided that initial guidance on April 26. If you look at the movements in the currency since April 26, the dollar has actually weakened against the euro. Uh, the dollar strengthened about 1.5%, 2% against the yen. It's flat versus the British pound. And so the currency hit actually seems very outsized relative to the actual currency movements. And... I see this as some cracks um, in the edifice of Microsoft and, and Microsoft is one of the best performers out there. And I, I do think that that speaks negatively to the overall markets. However, uh, the market right now is in a mood, is in a very forgiving mood. And this means that uh, if it's entirely due to currency, it's basically a resetting of the bar for these companies. And uh, they're just pleased that Microsoft didn't guide down further. Tom, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it doesn't read well for management. I mean, really missing based entirely on currency movements is just a lack of foresight and a lack of, of really cash management. So it, does, it doesn't read through great, but you know, luckily the stock was up yesterday. I think that they're still in a good position. I think that's something that can be rectified more easily than say if it had been operational related to the business. You know, so this can kind of be a one-time hit. Hey, we screwed up on our our forex uh, situation, but we're going to work to rectify that and potentially you know, do better towards the second half of the year. I would not be surprised and do not be surprised if next week you see a raft of further guidance downgrades from other companies because between Salesforce and NVIDIA and now Microsoft over the last week and a half uh, and those, those stocks actually going up despite revising guidance downward, 
I think that opens the door for a lot of companies who may not be as good operators, who didn't want to venture out and, and warn on profit, they can now come out and have some degree of confidence that the market's not going to adversely punish them, at yeah. least not, not in this market. So uh, that's, that's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, two companies reporting earnings rate, uh, restoration hardware. Uh, they revised downward their revenue guide for the year. They're trading down about 3% right now. But frankly, I mean, if they had reported these numbers a week or two ago, I could see them down 15%, yeah. um, given how the market was reacting to those numbers at that time. Our revenue is expected to be flat to up 2% this year. That's down from a prior guidance of 5 to 7%. Margin is going to be a little bit tighter. Uh, the quarter was actually a lot better than expected, um, but they say that Due to current trends in the uncertain macroeconomic environment, they're reducing guidance for the year. Now, re Restoration Hardware has actually been out in front of a lot of these negative movements. They were one of the first to warn on the underlying economy three months ago. And so, you know, I am not surprised that they are also talking the stock down right now. The stock's not down a whole lot. I actually think Restoration Hardware is a fairly well run company at the very high end. Uh, meanwhile, Lululemon reported earnings, uh, they actually got it up for the year. So that's really good numbers from them. Uh, definitely a bright spot in an otherwise soft environment for apparel. Tesla though, camp out on Tesla just for a minute. Elon Musk, backstory on Tesla uh, is, is a few things. At a mid-May conference in Miami, Elon said, quote, I think we are probably in a recession and that recession will get worse. I don't think Tom and I really necessarily disagree with that from the economic standpoint. Um, on Tuesday, Musk sent an email saying Tesla employ employees are required to be in the office for a minimum of 40 hours per week and, quote, if you don't show up, we will assume you have resigned. And so Elon's basically trying to do the drip trip of get ready as another announcement coming. And then so on this morning, overnight, he sends out an email. Uh, and the email was titled, quote, pause all hiring worldwide. Uh, in this email to all of his staff, he said that Tesla needs to cut 10% of jobs. That's a lot of jobs. Tesla hired, employed 100,000 people at the end of 2021. There's supposed to be a growth company that's supposed to be ramping production up. And they're talking about cutting 10% of the workforce. That's a big cut. Um, I mean, just think about that at normal, Tom. Like, what, what would have losing two, two people do? Sorry, sorry, Hicks. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's a sizable cut. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, he says he has a, quote, super bad feeling about the economy. I don't know how you define super bad, but that's, that's what Elon Musk I is mean, feeling right now. He's, a, he's shown himself to be a shrewd operator, uh, if a nutty one. But I think that there's two things going on here. One, I think the writing is on the wall. We've talked a lot about on the call that the – the happy days of working from home and low productivity are over. And I think in the same way that Microsoft can kind of be the human shield on resetting uh, expectations for earnings, Elon Musk can be the human shield for other companies saying, hey, it's time for people to get back uh, into the office. Because at the end of the day, you know, we can't really say how productive people are at home. You know, I don't think there's any real read through of that. I know people are happier potentially, but that's not really what a job is. You know, a job is trading your time for money. And if things are going to get tough, I think, you know, people need to batten down the hatches and work hard. And he says that in the email too, basically saying, you know, you know, we're trying to put out the, some of the best products on the planet and phoning it in is phoning it in for a reason. You know, they call it phoning it in because you're sitting at home using the phone and you're not physically present. Uh, and I think that there's going to be a lot of companies moving that way. I mean, we saw Airbnb do the opposite a couple of weeks ago, but I don't think Airbnb is going to outperform Tesla over the next two or three years. I just don't think that running a business that way is potentially the best way to do it. I think work has been worked for one way for a long time for a reason. And uh, I think that Elon sees that. And, you know, if, if cutting 10% of jobs is what's going to keep Tesla afloat and productive and doing what needs to be done in terms of the balance sheet, then I think it's a, it's a difficult decision to make, but I think it's probably the right one. If, given that things are going this way, I mean, you know, the easiest thing not to buy uh, is an expensive electric car if you don't have to. I mean, same with restoration hardware. The easiest thing not to buy is a $45,000 couch. You know, these are companies that have to recognize what the environment is and move accordingly. And I think that's what he's doing. Tom, are you surprised with how quickly this has happened? I, I feel like we've moved in just the last two months from all of a sudden that week at the beginning of April, I think Andrew was 
uh, on holiday. And um, I, and I was sending some teams messages and they were extremely negative sentiment because the freight had just fallen out of bed. And in the last two months, we've seen retailers really get hit. We've seen inflation bite. And then, and then all of a sudden, beginning in mid-May, we started to see the job freezes, the hiring freezes. And now we're starting to see big companies institute job cuts. Amazon's trying to sell warehouses. Tesla's firing 10% of its workforce. Um, is this happening faster? Or is this just what you would expect in terms of the timeline? I think it's... I think it took a little bit of time for it to hit home. Cause at first it was like, Hey man, groceries are a little more expensive and people start to notice that. And you think, man, I really spent a lot on that this week. And then it happens a few more times. I mean, I can tell you that, you know, I got popped with having to buy a new air conditioner and it set me back quite a bit. Uh, and you know, those things start to add up. I mean, I started thinking, you know, we've had to get this new AC. Now I've got to really start thinking about my personal balance sheet because otherwise, you know, you start drifting into, well, I'm gonna put it on a credit card. I'm going to start, carrying a balance, something, things get out of control. So you need to start to think, how do I cut back? Where do I cut back? And I think that if people are doing with that personal balance sheets, companies are feeling that too. You know, people running those companies looking around saying, Hey man, this wages are getting expensive. We got to make sure we have the right people in place. We need to make sure we have the right materials in place and it's all going up, you know, and the best way to, you know, to fix that problem is to, you know, start austerity measures. How do we cut back? How do we make this work? And we start, don't lose ground. We don't start carrying a credit card balance. And I think that that's what we're in. I think a lot of people are seeing that. And it took four or five turns of the key of paying extra for groceries, having an unexpected expense that was 150% of the cost that you thought it was going to be, start to mount up. And you think, man, this is getting tough. We need to, we need to figure this thing out. How do you square these announcements with the data that we got this morning? A pretty good jobs report, relatively weak on the on the average hourly earnings, but a pretty good report in terms of number of jobs there and a relatively low unemployment rate. Because we're seeing this anecdotal evidence of micro, I mean, huge companies cut hiring freezes or job cuts. I mean, I think the, the real read through is going to be the ADP report that showed that small business payroll is getting crushed because that's what, who's going to affect more quickly, right? If you're Facebook, you got money floating all over the place. You don't even know where it's coming from. There's just money everywhere. And it's starting to dry up, but it's going to take a lot longer for that to happen. But if you're a narwhal and suddenly margins start getting cut all over the place, you know, you're not making as much money, uh, you know, then things start to be tighter more quickly. You know, it's one thing to have a billion dollars on your balance sheet that could get burned off over a year or two. It's another thing to be like, we got a million bucks to cover a million bucks of worth of payroll. You know, we need to find a way to uh, make sure everybody gets paid. Awesome. Um, well, not, not awesome. No, no, I, I, yeah. I, I, pre, I appreciate the thought. I think that's a canary in the coal mine. I think it's small businesses. Yeah. I think that's where you see the most. Uh, we get, we do get CPI report next Friday. That'll be the big report to watch. And then the following Wednesday, June 15th, we have the Fed meeting. We pretty much know what's going to happen at the Fed meeting. Uh, but I think the CPI report is going to be really, really key because that's going to tell us is inflation actually coming down like people think. Uh, right now, that's the narrative. Um, the narrative right now uh, and the reason the market's doing better is because inflation is uh, appearing to peak and uh, jobs, at least in the reported numbers, are actually still strong. Um, looking for cracks in both of that, though. And uh, hopefully this is a change. Hopefully we're starting to see the sea change. But um, concern is this could be a head fake. So we're going to continue to watch it closely. Have a great weekend. Enjoy it. And we will see you tomorrow uh, on Monday. Excuse me.